So I have an online remote cybersecurity internship program that I offer through my course and my company. And when I made a video kind of talking about the internship program and how it works, I got this really critical but very thoughtful comment um, left on the video. And I just kind of wanted to address this and take the time to answer this viewer's comment to everybody. I'm gonna give some context about the course and the internship, like why I created the internship and where it came from exactly before I go ahead and respond to the viewer's comment. But if you just wanna hear me responding to the comment, go ahead and skip to this timestamp. So, so you know what to expect. I'm gonna answer the questions, uh, how does the internship work? What kind of technology will you be dealing with in, in the internship? Have any employers reached out to me for a reference after somebody has gone through the internship and the course subsequently? Um, has anyone gotten hired after going through the internship? And then after you have context, I'm gonna take time to answer this viewer's uh, comment line by line and kind of address everything that they're talking about. And I feel like I'm as honest and transparent as I can possibly be. So if you appreciate that, please consider subscribing. Really appreciate it a lot. So for some context, I have a hands-on cybersecurity course. It's delivered in the cloud. Everything is done in Azure. We build a honey net and a sock um, and we set up a SIM and we do incident response against live attack traffic from the internet. Basically, there's three separate portions to the course. There's like a cybersecurity theory section where we cover like, like you know, cybersecurity theory, controls, what risk is, what, you know, th uh, threats, exploits, vulnerabilities are. We cover all of those really common frameworks like NIST 800, 53, 37, NIST 861, uh, GDPR, PCI DSS, HIPAA, those kind of you know theory heavy stuff. And then we have a lab portion where we do the stuff I talked about. We build the, the, the SOC in the cloud, set up a SIM, into response, log aggregation, all of these things. And then we have a, a job hunt section where we um, reconstruct your resume, build a portfolio, go over how to practice interviewing and um, the strategy for applying to jobs. And the whole course is just um, designed to make you a, an employable person with um, a nice resume and some kind of experience to, to show on your resume, if that makes sense. And the technical lab portion of the course, it can get pretty involved. We th There's a, a decent amount of stuff we do in there and people can get lost, right? Because it's, it's a little bit complex a lot of virtual machines and, and logging, log aggregation and querying of logs. And you, we have like a lot of stuff to set up. And because of this, it tends to generate a lot of questions. Um, and I found that myself was spending a lot of time, like too much time in the Discord, basically doing um, cybersecurity troubleshooting and like cybersecurity support with security configs. And so I was like, okay, I need to hire somebody. So I hired somebody um, to help me with those and I, I still pay them and they still work for me. They basically hang out in the Discord. There's currently, there's over 1500 students um, that at least have bought, bought the course. So there's a lot of questions coming that need to be fielded, right? And after a while, I kind of realized like, okay, like how many times do me and my staff really need to configure a SIM and like set up SSH and how many times do we need to configure um, log aggregation and, and all of the stuff. It's just um, a lot of security support that we're doing that we don't need the experience for. And I realized like, oh, I'm just wasting a bunch of experience on me and my staff. So I, I retained the staff, but I, I, I realized that I could make an internship program and have the students who have gone through the course already and, and passed the, the test and graduated, I could have them submit like an internship application and then essentially become an internship and become an intern and help field the cybersecurity config and those um, cloud configuration and otherwise just general security troubleshooting questions. And so that's, that's what I did. I researched like how to open an internship and there's not really that many rules for it. So I just went ahead and did it. And that's kind of where the internship came from. The internship is unpaid, um, but I'll, I'll definitely elaborate on why that is later, but it's just kind of added after the fact. I'm not selling an internship program. I'm selling like a nicely packaged course and I added the internship after the fact for people who just wanted extra experience and like an actual intern, like cybersecurity internship on their resume. So before I actually start answering the viewer's question, I'm gonna answer these frequently asked questions about the internship, because for sure people are gonna ask these. So basically uh, I'm gonna answer, how does the internship work? What kind of technology do you, do you deal with, et cetera, that we kind of talked about in the beginning. So how does the internship work? Basically um, you'll go through the course, you'll finish the course, like finish the lab and everything and then you'll take and pass an exam 
um, you have to pass the exam in order to get the internship application document. And after you pass the exam, you'll fill out this internship application document, and then you'll share it with me and then my my staff that helps me manage the Discord. And he's like the the main backup for answering questions. And after you do that, basically you'll uh, you'll assist people in, in the Discord. Um, so when people they need help with questions, they get stuck on something, they will tag a, a Josh plus interns group, and the people who have signed up to the internship. Um, they should get a notification in Discord, and then they'll they'll if they know the answer to the question that's being asked, you can go ahead and work with that user or that uh, student to to resolve their issue. And then once you did, you'll make an entry in your um, experience tracking sheet for your internship. And then depending on how many assists you have, you can have different titles for your internship. So you can have like cybersecurity support technician, cybersecurity support analyst, or cybersecurity support engineer if you have you know, 30 assists. So that's basically how that works. Okay, now time to finally respond to the actual comment. I'm just gonna read through it and then respond to it chunk by chunk. So um, with all due respect, Mr. Matikor, people should look at this video and your courses uh, with critical thinking applied. I 100% agree with this. I have a whole video where I talk about how to tell if a course is a scam and like how to think about the course. Um, so I 100% agree with this. Check out that video, by the way, if you're curious. Moving on, if you take his course and apply for the internship he has set, you have to ask yourself the money that I spend here, will there be any return and what return do I want? Experience, knowledge, or a great salary at a great company. Um, again, this is a you know a reasonable thing to say. I, I agree with what he's saying here. Continuing, um, the latter of the second quote would be the choice most of you would make because it shows all you want is money. That's a kind of a weird thing to say, but I, I, I guess I can understand because we're all trying to like make a living here, I suppose. Um, I think that I think what he's saying is directed at the actual student um, who just wants to get a job and get money. So yeah, I guess I agree. Continuing with his comment, um, that is okay if that's the case, depending on the employer for your company you apply for. They may not know who Josh Matikor is, and if the work you do for him is relevant to the company as well as the job that you applied for, um, so this it's not this is not really how I want people to think about the course. I don't want them to be like, okay, I got like a credential from Josh Matikor, so employers know who Josh Matikor is, so I'm like I'm gonna get hired. That's not at all what I had in mind. Um, so basically, like the way the course is, it's just designed to make you into a really good candidate, right? There's like a really heavy theory section, heavy lab section, and then the job hunt section. And it's designed to like if you watch the employability framework, I talk about like how getting a job in in general, right? But in cybersecurity, it all boils down to like getting an interview and then being able to pass the interview. Everything that we do in the course is kind of revolved around those two things. It's designed to make you look really good. Of course, it's you know to teach you stuff, but getting an interview and passing an interview is, is kind of hard. So we go through stuff that's relevant to most like cybersecurity operations and GRC positions. And we put some good stuff on your resume and I teach you how to like interview well and apply to a job as well. So it just turns you to into an employable person. And there's no like, you know, correlation to like Josh Matikor's course. So like I went through like Josh Matikor's leveled course to so hire me. It, it's not that it's designed to make you look like a capable cybersecurity professional. It's not like, you know, a special credential, right? Like an Ivy League thing where you can like trade for a job, but that's not what the course is. Um, as for if the work is relevant to the company that you apply for, um, especially if you do the internship, the your tickets or your uh, assist tracking sheet, it will be um, apparent if um, what you did during the internship and the course is relevant to what the, the employer is doing, right? Even if you don't do the internship, I give you a sample resume of everything that's like covered in the course and what I think you should put on your resume, right, based on on having gone through the course. But if you do the internship component, that's just an, an extra thing. And what you put under your internship, you know, you can just use ChatGPT or something and have it scrape your um, your tickets, like your assist tracking sheet, and just throw them on your resume in like a nice way that makes sense. Uh, he goes on to say, you want your resume to be picked, um, but not everyone will have the opportunity. Um, yeah, this is, yes, I, I, I agree. 
but uh, it's our job to make sure our resume is good as possible. And in the course, we have like a whole section dedicated to reconstructing the resume, making sure that it is really easily readable by humans and properly parsable by ATS, the applicant tracking system. So we just have to do what we can. In this instance, we, we strive to be at least better than the next person, right? And that's kind of what the course is for. He goes on to say, I'm not saying the course Josh provides have no value, but he is not a local employer nor big like Google. Um, this is true. I'm not, I'm not Google. I don't, I don't know what to say about that. Um, my company is, it's a regular company, right? I have, um, aside from the interns, I have 10 employees, not including myself. And they do things from, you know, being editors to managing the, the website to uh, supporting the Discord. And then I feel like I'm forgetting something really important. Oh, I have like a, a personal assistant too, right? And my company is an ed tech company, helps people get into IT and cybersecurity jobs. And there's like the whole YouTube component as well. So I, it is like an actual real company. It's a registered LLC being taxed as an S corp, but it's not, um, you know, I'm not Google. So I don't, I don't know what to say to that. I don't think, you know, all employers are really expecting like a Google tier work history or anything. Um, just like a verifiable work history with like a, a legit looking company. He says, keep that in mind to make smart decisions and not feel disappointed. hundred percent agree with that. He says also unpaid internships are not worth it for anyone in any career. Employers do not like to see that. Um, this is completely not true and almost doesn't even merit any explanation. Um, if you think about it, what's better, like a, an internship with verifiable, like verifiable and quantifiable experience where you can look at it and then verify the experience or just none at all. It's really obvious, like which one is better. I'm not, I'm not sure why this person said that. Um, it's just not true. Believe it or not, having a paid internship means you are doing critical work for a business. This is also not even true at all because you can think about paid employees who are not actually providing any value. How many paid employees in big tech or otherwise are not not actually doing anything, right? So you, you can't really make the argument that because an intern is being paid, they're actually providing any kind of value. That's like a really not the best way to think about it. I mean, I get what he's saying, but it's just not true. So um, I don't really have anything else to say. At this point, you might be wondering like why the internship is unpaid. Oh, his comment is done by the way. So I'll answer that. Um, basically, I, I don't like to get in the habit of doing stuff that's not scalable or automatable that I can't automate, right? And to have that volume of like interns like come through and um, even if pretend I had like the capital to pay them, just like the whole like administrative component of that, of setting up like payment and all that stuff is just going to take a lot of time. Right. And it's, it's just, um, if I do that, I'm going to charge for sure. I'm going to charge like more for the course or, and then it, you know, it just doesn't make sense to be honest. Um, I do have a paid staff. Again, I have a paid staff who's like responsible for the discord and I, I help with that as well. The internship component was just something I made after the fact, and I made it in the most like easily automatable way as possible where the student can just like onboard themselves and do the work and then have their tracking spreadsheet. And then everything is like kind of handled by my staff and like the student, it's just like really automated well using discord. So that's why it's just something I added after the fact I didn't plan, like I'm going to make an internship and like sell it. Like I, I made a, a nice course that I think is, has a lot of value and I sell the course and then I realized the internship makes sense for people who want to like, you know, do some extra like hands on things and like get like, you know, uh, a sign off or whatever for my company and like an internship. You don't have to do it like you don't have to do the course either. Right? I always like tell people like you can you can do all this free stuff instead of the course. If you join the course, you don't have to do the internship and pretend like I'm gonna charging for it or something. It's just something extra that you, if you want to have it on your resume, you can do it. And making it paid, it just adds like a lot of com complexity for me. And I have like too much complexity already. For sure, like, you know, I don't wanna give extra money away. Yeah, like you can say this, but the, the main headache and pain point for me is just like the super extra amount of complexity um, that would add and it's just really simple right now and it's just really easy to deal with so that's why so let me know in the comments um, if you think I'm like scamming or something or you have something to say I will likely read it or someone will read it and I might respond to it if you make like a really compelling point or something like this hope this makes sense uh, hope you enjoy the content and for those of you who have gone through the course um, you can like you know leave your opinions down below about it if you want but yeah thank you for watching and we will see you in the next video